Hi everyone, thanks for joining me once again for another round of Saturday morning stories. I've got five stories for you today, uh, one or two of them are a little bit short, some are a little bit more drawn out. Okay, before we get into the stories, I've had the fashion police on at me again, you won't believe this. You might think I'm making this up for entertainment purposes, but I'm really not. The, a guy actually wrote to me and this is what he said. I put out a video about a week ago and it was basically how I ended up here in Thailand at age 62, retired, living here forever or as long as ever can be. And uh, the shirt I was wearing at the time, I was wearing a nice smart polo shirt, which was slightly bigger for me, a uh, bit too big for me, but because I was crouched down on a sofa, it kind of gathered up and it looked much more bigger. And this guy actually wrote a serious comment and he said, look, Peter, that video looked really interesting. I started to watch it. He said, but I just couldn't watch it. You know, you look, you're wearing a shirt like it was made for the Hulk. You've got to learn how to buy shirts your size. Sorry, I won't be watching the rest of the video. And I'm like, is somebody trying to wind me up here? But it was absolutely true. So if you're that gentleman who's with the fashion police and you sent me that message last week, uh, I'll do my best to get the, uh, a good fitting shirt like I have today. I hope you're happy with today's shirt, okay? All, all, with that all being said and done, let's get into the first of these five stories. I am a teacher by trade, started my teaching career in 1999 when I was only 18. I taught for over six non-consecutive years in the US before getting sick of the lack of pay teaching in California and one night I had a dream about teaching in Japan. I got up in the middle of the night and started researching online. From what I could see, teaching in Japan was not very profitable but found a Canadian company that worked with schools around the globe placing English teachers. Looking at their website, I saw they were recruiting teachers to go to Georgia, country, not state, so I applied to go there. I got, pre I got a pretty quick response from them and they asked me why I wanted to go to Georgia and not to China, where I could make incredible money. So after a few back and forth messages with them, they convinced me to go to China. A few months later, I had my bag packed, my car sold and my passport in hand and I was off to Shanghai in China. I am a disabled man with my limitations but have pretty much always been able to mask my limitations pretty well. But in China, they do not have the respect for disabled people like myself that they had back home. I cycled through a few jobs in my first few months but was determined to make it on my own I left Shanghai and went to a smaller city just south of Huangzhou. I was renting a room in a house with like 10 Chinese people who spoke no English. I was working two part-time jobs seven days a week and bringing in crazy money while paying practically nothing for my little room. But to keep my visa, I had to find a full-time job. So I left my little room and got a job at a big chain hotel on the other side of town. That job turned out to be a flop again due to my disability. So I kept looking and found a lower paying job on the outskirts of the city, but a free room. I stayed there for about a year before the boss found a couple of non-native English speaking guys to teach there for much less money. At that point is when I found the best job ever. I was teaching adults and a few, teachers, a few teenagers in an English language learning center in a small city, less than 500,000 people. The pay was outstanding and the apartment provided by the school was across the street from the center. I couldn't ask for a better situation. I stayed at that school for a full two years before moving to a larger city with the same school where I taught for another year and a half. So now I had been in China for five years and learned to speak Chinese well enough to get by and had made lots of friends and had a few girlfriends and lovers to boot. I was at that same school called Webb for about three and a half years when things started to get bad. Teachers were getting let go of and classes were getting cancelled all the time. I was called in one day off to come to see my bosses and was let go for having had a student complain about one of my classes. Great. I went back on the job boards and found a school looking for teachers and made an appointment with the boss to discuss it. I immediately loved this guy named Joe. He was a Christian, pretty rare in China. He was a really friendly guy and had some great things to say about his school. At this point, I had to go back to the US for a family wedding and so took my final paycheck from Webb and bought my tickets for a two-week stay. On my return, I immediately went to work with Joe 
and we worked the whole summer growing his school from like 50 students to over 300 over the summer. The only problem was his school wasn't f fully accredited with the Education Bureau, so he wasn't able to renew my visa. I went down to Hong Kong and met a visa agent who set me up a 10-year business visa. The only catch was I had to leave the country every 60 days to renew it. This proved very difficult for me because the second exit was due during the Spring Festival holiday in 2019. And travelling out of China during Spring Festival was damn near impossible. I unfortunately turned myself into the police right after the holiday and was arrested for overstaying my visa and was deported back to the US. Not long after I was back in my country, the world stuck down by the virus that shall not be named. I have been saving my money up to go back to Asia and I think Thailand will be my destination. Talking to quite a few people, it doesn't sound like teachers get paid very well in Thailand either, but honestly, what else is new? I'm a simple guy looking for a simple life. If you have any advice on getting English teaching jobs, please do share. Thanks for sharing your experiences and the experiences of those who have shared with you. I truly enjoy your channel. All the best, Tim. So I, I'm not really uh, very knowledgeable on the whole teaching thing in Thailand here. I, I know you do have to, ha you can start with lesser qualifications, but I think after two years, you need to get some more qualifications. Uh, I'm just kind of pulling things out of a hat. It's just things I've heard uh, might not be true. So if you're watching this story, and maybe you're a teacher here in Thailand who's gone down the same path as this guy. Just any advice you have for this guy, just leave them in in the comments. And I'm sure he'll watch, listen to the upload and he'll read the comments. So any advice, obviously, he's going to be thankful for. The only other thing I'd say on that, with regards to disability, yes, it does seem to be true. In the West, they, they do cater for disability. Uh, they have ramps at shopping centers. There are uh, wheelchair um, accessible doors. And generally, people are polite. They don't mention things about disabilities. But I, even I've found in Asia, there doesn't seem to be that compassion. You know, they don't seem to cater. It seems to be getting better now in Thailand. I've noticed some restaurants do have wheelchair ramps and things like that. Um, but if you do have a disability, you've got to be pretty tough skinned because out here in Asia, it doesn't really count for a lot, unfortunately. And as I say, it is improving. It has improved over the years, um, but you still might uh, face difficulties as far as how people how you're looked upon here as opposed to your own country okay right but don't let it put you off coming to asia because it's still a great place i see a lot of guys in wheelchairs in pattaya you'll be surprised how many times i've seen a wheelchair go flying down the beach road with a bar girl stood on the back of it scooting along and you know this guy's on his way to wherever so you know there is fun to be had wheelchair or no wheelchair right okay let's get into uh story number two now this is one of my favorite stories because it goes back way back to the 60s and it's a, a real old kind of love story from Thailand involving somebody from the military and I think you're going to enjoy this. When I got out of school back in the 60s I received my draft, no draft notice to come and fight in the war in Vietnam but I knew it was coming so I joined the Air Force but I truly was so green and dumb that I had no idea what life was really all about. I was raised on a farm northwest of Arkansas. I had not even had a date in school with a girl. I was so bashful I couldn't even speak to a girl. So what happened is I married the first girl that came along. I fell in love with a Korean girl. I thought I was living even though I have to admit I probably should have never married her. I got stationed at AFB in Arkansas after career. My wife finally got her visa and she was able to come to the States on August the 19th, 1972. A month and a half later, but at that time, Vietnam was still going on and AFB was right in the middle of sending personnel to support the war. So we were together once again, but it only lasted about 45 days and they were sending to me what I thought was Anderson Air Force Base in Guam for six months. I tried everything I could to get out of the temporary duty station, but they said I had to go. So what was I going to do with my wife? She had only been in America a month and a half and I literally had to dump her on my mother and father to take care of her. In my orders it said Guam but I ended up at T Taki Air Base, Thailand. My wife and family had no idea where I was until I was able to write home and tell them. At first, when I got there, I worked day shift. I was pretty good at first but I was feeling sorry for myself thinking how could the Air Force do this to me. 
I tried staying in my barracks, but it seemed like the walls started closing in. So one of the guys in my barracks said he was going downtown and to do a little drinking, and if anybody wanted to go with him, I said, sure, why not? So that night, I just drank a little to see what it was like. But it's when we decided to get a massage, things went downhill. All the girls giving me my massage was only interested in mass massaging my private parts. I couldn't take it anymore, so I made love to her. I'd already cheated on my wife. I felt so bad and went back and said, no more. I'm going to stay on base. Once again, after about 10 days, the wall started closing in again. This time, another guy asked me if I wanted to go out drinking with him. I thought, sure, I could just go out and drink with him. And we started bar hopping from one end of Taki to the other. We were doing good until we got to the last bar. I was really feeling good and was well on my way to getting drunk. And then it happened. I saw a go-go girl, girl dancing on the platform above the bar. My eyes just about jumped out of my head. I thought the girl on the platform was about the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen. I just had to meet her. So the other guy I came there with had his eyes on a girl named Dang. Dang said the girl on the stage name is Tim and she was her sister. I said, do you think I could meet her? So she introduced her to me. I still remember how Tim looked at me the first time. A look that basically told me to get lost. But for some reason, Dang told her something and Tim just smiled at me and went back to dancing. I stopped drinking at that time, hoping she was available to stay the night with. So Dang, who said she was Tim's sister, said that she was having her period so she can't stay the night with anybody. But since the other guy was, with, was staying with Dang, I was going to have to catch the bus back to base by myself. Then Dang said, you can stay the night for $2.50 and stay with Tim, but you can't do anything. I said, that sounds great, but I, don't, I think she only did it because of Dang. Well, when we went to a bungalow, first thing she did was show me the picture of another Air Force guy working without a shirt. I think she was trying to tell me that he was her old boyfriend, so that maybe that would scare me away. After that, we went to bed and she sure didn't make it easy for me. She stripped down to only her panties and climbed into bed and lay her head on my shoulder. I put my arm around her and told her good night. We slept that way all night. I really believe she was testing me to see if I would respect her and not try to do anything. We both woke up the next morning and since I was off work that day, I was slow to get ready to go to the base. Just as I was ready, I decided even though we never made love, I gave her $5 and told her since she couldn't make any money, please take it. I really think that changed her whole attitude towards me. So as I started to go, she said, please, can you spend the day with me since you don't have to work? I couldn't believe it. So I, could, I said yes. I couldn't say yes fast enough. So after breakfast, she said, let's go. Since she couldn't speak English too good, she couldn't tell me where we were going. But I didn't care. I just followed her because I felt like I was with the most beautiful girl in Thailand. We had to walk a little ways, but we ended up at the train station. She bought our train tickets. I tried to pay, but she said no. So we got on the train and I was just hoping we got back by dark. Well, we finally got to a place called Lotbury. What I remember most was I never saw so many monkeys. And as you walk, you had to walk by and around and through monkey after monkey. We finally ended up, of all places, at the hospital. She came to see a friend named Noi. But what Tim didn't know when we got there, they were discharging her friend. So now we made the long trip back and once again Tim paid for the tickets. After we got back, it was time for her to go to work and dance. This time, Tim asked me to stay the night after she finished dancing. Once again, she said she was still on her periods. I didn't care. I knew at least I got to hold her. So once again, I spent the night and done nothing. But the next morning, I had to get up early and go to work at the base. She walked me out of the bungalow area and said, please come back tonight. I said, I will be here. After I got off work, I couldn't wait to see Tim. I told myself that I don't care how long it takes, I will sleep with her. Well, once again, for the third night, we did not do anything. But early in the morning, as I was sleeping, I felt Tim slowly come to me and started kissing me. So that was it. We made love. Without a doubt, she was and will always be forever the best lover I've ever had. I absolutely thought I'd died and gone to heaven. So after that, Tim and I became kind of a couple.
But one night I drank too much, so she put me to bed early and said she would come in later. I guess I went to sleep and when I woke up, there was no Tim. She never came back home and I thought, so the next morning I let myself out and was really upset. I thought she had gone and spent the night with someone else. So that night I got with the same guy I went down the first time and we started bar hopping again. I thought I'll show her. It was almost bus time and I was pretty drunk. So I was going to go tell Tim off. Well, it didn't happen. She had been looking for me all night long. Dang jumped on me, wanted to know where I'd been. Tim was crying because she thought I wasn't coming back. Then I asked where was Tim last night. Dang said that when Tim checked on you, you were sleeping so well, she didn't want to disturb you. Dang said, I'm having my period and she stayed with me. I felt bad. Then when I saw Tim, I told her, I was so sorry I didn't trust you. Then it happened. She said that she was getting a job on base as a go-go dancer and if I wanted to move into a bungalow together with Hirsch, I could. Once again, I said yes before I could think. I told her that I don't have much money and it would be hard to get a bungalow on the base. She said, that's okay, I can help with cash. So the next day, we moved to a, bung to a bungalow and we started to build a close relationship. I told her about my wife and I was going back to the States to get a divorce. So everything was going well and to me I had the perfect life with Tim. Only thing I hated was her working as a go-go dancer and having to show herself off to all the airmen and the officers when she danced. But what could I do? She made the money. But then after about two months she told me that she was pregnant. I was as happy as I could be until she said that she was going to abort our baby. I tried and tried to talk to her into keeping our baby, but she said she couldn't trust me. I was devastated, but it was her choice. If she would have only known, I would have traveled to the ends of the earth for her and my child. So I keep trying and trying to get her to change her mind, but she refused. I thought she was going to a doctor to have the abortion, but a couple of days later, I come home and I found Tim very sick. She had taken some pills that would cause her to lose a baby. She said, but there was a catch. She said she could die. So I had to watch her for three long days. Tim had a friend that watched her during the night when I worked. It was the end of the first day she said that she had lost the baby. I didn't show Tim, but I had to go off by myself and I just cried and cried. By the end of the fourth day, Tim had turned the corner and started to get better. But for some reason, I felt a little betrayed. But as time went by and we were able to make love, it got better. So for about a little over a month, things were going great again. Then it happened, we saw some of my day shift workers coming down the path to our bungalow. We were wondering why they were there. They said that the tanker unit is pulling out and the SAC personnel has been restricted to the base because all the tankers are flying back to each base they were assigned and each tanker is taking their personnel with them. What a shock. I had to pack while Tim was crying so bad. I couldn't think. So we had to say our goodbyes. I promised him that I would come and get her as soon as I could. Well, I broke my promise. I got back, but I was too late, or so I was told. I was on the first tanker to leave, and the last time I saw my beautiful Tim's face. What a long flight it was, and I had all that time to process what I was going to, going to say to my wife and how to ask her for a divorce. You see, I hadn't written to her in four months. My mother even got the Red Cross involved and they called me from the United States. When I talked to my wife, I told her that the mail was all messed up because of the war. But I had a feeling she didn't buy that. Well, I prepared myself for a big fight. But then, as I was thinking, I thought, I don't have any money because my wife will probably get everything we have. How can I get back to Tim? Then I thought that I would just wait to see what my wife says. She may ask me for the divorce and a plane ticket back to Korea but my parents I knew will be on her side. So I prepared for a fight and a divorce and see what, where it goes from there. Well, we finally landed at the airport. My family didn't even know I was back in the States. When I called, I only talked to my mother and she said, dad will come and pick you up. My wife didn't come with him, so I thought she probably doesn't want to see me again. By the time I got home, I had planned about everything in my mind what I was going to say and do. My dad talked very little to me all the way home. He never said a word about what happened to me over in Thailand and why I didn't write to my wife. 
We finally pulled up in the driveway and I think my knees were shaking because I figured all hell was fixing to break loose. I got out of the car and got my bag out of the trunk. Then finally, I was with my wife. I thought to myself, this is it. She walked up to me and didn't say a word. She then threw her arms around me and told me she loved me and then gave me a big kiss. I thought to myself, this is not supposed to happen. She should be mad and very upset. Then she kissed me again and I couldn't say anything. Then she said, I don't want to know anything about what happened in Thailand. She also said that she forgives me for whatever I'd done to hurt her. I was completely shocked. How could I ask for a divorce if she forgave me for all I'd done? I found myself, myself right in the middle of having to make a choice in my life. My beautiful wife or my beautiful Tim, which one will I choose? That night, I saw a completely different wife I had before I left Thailand. She even talked differently and I liked it. It was like I fell in love with her instead of that young and dumb selfish husband. It wasn't easy, but I told myself I was going to have to let my beautiful Tim go. I had no money to get to her. I had nothing to offer her. I was so mixed up and I had nowhere to turn. Yes, I had two roads in life to go, but I could only choose one. At that time, I loved Tim more than my wife but I couldn't give Tim a life at that time. So I chose my wife. Over the years, our love grew, but I confess that when I made love to my wife, it was Tim's face I saw when I closed my eyes. But over the years, our love has grown. Tim's face slowly disappeared. I never thought about Tim too much over the years until I started having vivid dreams about her and us making love again. I thought I was going crazy because of the dreams were so real. Then I found out that because of Parkinson's, I will be dreaming a lot about the past. I would love to find Tim after all these years, but I got a feeling she prob probably wouldn't want to see me. Tim's road would have been a rough road. The road with my wife has been a road of blessings. On this road, I married a beautiful wife. I adopted a beautiful daughter and I got two beautiful granddaughters. Now that was a road worth taking. If I was to ever see Tim again, I would ask her to forgive me. She probably wouldn't. I hope Tim found a wonderful guy to give her a wonderful life. But to this day, I still have a place in my heart for Tim. Okay, so, I mean, he was very, very young, the guy, when he was over there. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a skeptic. You know what I'm like. I hear a lot of these stories. And I think he made, uh, he might have just got lucky, but I think he made the right choice. You know, his Korean wife was obviously the, the real deal. He spent the rest of his life with her. Uh, Tim, the beautiful bar girl, I mean, she was dancing on an American airbase, you know, all that uh, about being pregnant and taking pills. And how does she know she was, she'd lost the baby? You know, she's not medically trained, anything like that. It sounds to me, I mean, no disrespect, disrespect to the guy who sent in this story. Uh, I'm always thankful for stories, but it sounds to me she was a, a typical bar girl playing the game. She found a guy who liked her and you know obviously she was up in her game and I think at the end of the day um, he, he did make the right choice whether it, uh, again whether it's just luck or or whatever um, but it turned out all good and, and I'm sure Tim did okay as they all do and uh, that was that okay let's go into the third story now I again being skeptical I'm going to read this out because it's a recent story and the guy sent it in I'll give you an opinion at the end but I, I'll just say listen to this with a skeptical mind okay this happened yesterday, 25th of April, 23, so I thought I would send it to you whilst it is still fresh in my mind. My name is George, and next month I shall be 83 years old, so I'm no spring chicken. I have lived in Thailand for 13 years, always somewhere inland and well away from the tourist areas. For the last eight years, I've lived in a small village in the province of Nakhon Sawan, central Thailand, I live with my girlfriend who is 56 years old and is still an attractive woman together with her 16 year old son who is not at all attractive. There are 10, 10 houses in the village and all are occupied by members of my girlfriend's family but that's another story in brackets never live that close to your girlfriend's family. We haven't had any rain this year in fact it's been very hot up to 45 degrees centigrade on several days. My girlfriend's brother, who is the village headman, told me last week that if the heat wave didn't soon stop, he would organise a rainmaking ceremony. There hasn't been one in the area for six years, 
As we have had plenty of rain in that time, and I've forgotten the locals still believed in these types of superstitions, we haven't lived what passes for nor a normal life in a Thai village for the past three or four years because of COVID. So I'm a bit out of touch with local goings on. On Monday evening, my girlfriend told me there was going to be a ceremony in the field near our local temple in the morning to pray for rain. Some of the local men had made an almost life-size effigy of a couple copulating in the missionary position. It was made from a wire frame covered with wet clay. It was situated on a large concrete area normally used for loading and unloading farm machinery on the edge of the field, about half a kilometre away from the temple. There are also 70 to 80 plastic chairs borrowed from the local temple set up in rows facing a makeshift stage covered in rugs for the monks to sit on when they did their chanting. People who were going to attend the ceremony never met at the local or all met at the local temple at 7 a.m. and when the monks were fed and watered we all trooped off to the ceremonial site. When we arrived there was the usual fussing of the monks making sure they all had a cushion to sit on and were generally comfortable. They then said a few prayers and did some chanting, followed by sprinkling water on the effigy. This was followed by the women who were there dancing around the effigy, sprinkling water on it and then bending down and rubbing the bodies of the copulating pair. Of course, by now the clay was very wet and the effigy was losing its shape, but the locals didn't seem to care. It was very lively and there was a lot of back slapping. Some beer appeared, the monks disappeared back to their temple and everyone else fell into party mood. Now, did it work? I was sceptical, but it worked six years ago, much to my amazement. I put it down to coincidence then, but would coincidence happen again? Everyone else was full of optimism, and sure enough, at 7pm, there was an almighty clap of thunder, a gale blew through the village, and it rained for about 10 minutes. At the first clap of thunder, all the lights went out, and we had no electricity until 2am the next morning. It was still baking hot, and the next morning it was a few degrees cooler. At 3 p.m. it started to rain and we had showers for about four hours. The temple dropped to 30 degrees and it was much more comfortable. So, is it coincidence or do the pagan gods still run Thailand? I swear this is a true story. Sorry it's only 10, sorry it's very short but it should fill about 10 minutes. So, <laughs> you know, they say that uh, lightning never strikes twice, don't they? And there was a place somewhere in America where it actually struck nine times. So, coincidence? Probably most definitely uh, just an opinion everyone's entitled to opinion right sometimes people say to me peter all these stories you get written uh, sent into you how do you know if they're genuine or, or they're made up uh, and, I, and my answer to that is i don't I, I don't screen them i'm not judgmental people send stories and i read them out uh, and i do believe that the majority of them are genuine just because they've taken so long to, uh, such a long time to write them out and the detail that goes into them now this next story i hope i don't upset the the, the author I think I'm taking this next story with a pinch of salt. That's all I'm going to say on it, okay? You make up your own mind and you see what you think. I have been coming to Thailand for about a decade and have several stories to share with you and your audience. Today's story is quite humorous. I was in Bangkok in February this year on a working holiday as I'm a digital nomad. I was telling my best friend, Ian, in Australia how I was having minor dramas with every bar girl that I took home. He offered to call an old contact of his who he gave great who gave great massage massages and has an awesome rig he told her to come to bangkok for the weekend and take care of me she used to be a massage lady in bangkok but had left five years ago anyway she arrived a day late typical thai time i went to pick her up at the train station i had a photo of her sent to me by my friend i couldn't see her so i called the lady's number eventually i worked out who it was indeed she had a tidy rig but between working on the farm, the cigarettes and the whiskey, she looked about 60 years old and way past her use-by date. Anyway, she stayed with me for the weekend and indeed she gave me some genuine massages, fixing some body pains. We then moved on to the aerobics about halfway through the weekend. The famous switch was flicked and she explained that because we had made love, she had a part of me and showed me photos of gold necklaces. I declined, so she went to plan B, which consisted of a plan of going halves on a buffalo. I explained that my assets were frozen by my solicitor as my divorce was going through, but my friend Ian had money and was interested in getting involved with some Thai farming. 
When we got to Sunday afternoon, I kept hinting that she needed to go as I worked during the week. It didn't work. So Monday morning, I dressed in proper work clothes and literally pushed her out the door as she wanted to stay and look after me. I gave her 4,000 baht and reminded her that my friend was interested in the buffalo. Once I was around the corner, I blocked her number, but three months on, my friend still receives phone calls from her asking to go halves on a buffalo. So there you go. You make up your own mind. I won't say anything else on that. Um, that's it once again for this week, guys. Thanks for listening. There'll be more stories next Saturday. And if you're into the live streams, I've now got uh, Marley on board, the lady uh, who does the live streams with me. She'll be with me. And uh, I hope you can come in and join in the, the, the lively chat. Okay, thanks again, guys. And I'll catch up with you real soon.